Good morning. Good morning. And welcome uh, to our service, our first service in this, in this new venue. So I'm glad you're all here. I know that the people I'm looking at have found it. I hope, I hope there's nobody else walking around the streets wondering where to go. Um, but we're here together. And we're here for the same reason that we're always here. We're here to worship God. We're here to be this world. We're here to be together in the fellowship. And so nothing has changed. We are the church of God here to worship. So let's worship. Good morning, church. We are glad you are here with us today in this new place to worship God. And as we start our worship, we will ask the presence of the Holy Spirit to dwell in our hearts and in our midst today. And let the glory of God flow in this place. Let's all stand and join us as we sing the first song, Holy, Holy, Holy. Thank you. 
this place. We thank you that you are here. We thank you that you were here before we were here. But we thank you also that you were with us and in us before we ever came here. We thank you, Lord, that location does not matter to me because you are everywhere by your Spirit. We thank you, Lord, that we can be sure and certain that you are always by our side. Sometimes we drift away, but you never drift away. So Lord, we pray that we will become increasingly aware of your presence in our midst this morning. We pray, Lord, that as we worship, as we read your word, and everything that we do, that we would sense that you are here. We thank you, Lord, for this place that has been provided for us to meet in. We thank you for the hospitality and the welfare that we have been given here. And we thank you, Lord, for each other, that we've been able to gather together again. And so, Lord, from the outset of our time in this place, we pray your blessing on going upon this place. And we pray, Lord, your blessing upon our congregation even as we meet in a different place. And so Lord, we pray for our service this morning. We pray you help us just to, most of all, to focus in on you as we gather. To forget about our struggles. To realize that the Spirit of the Lord is in this place. And that you are opening yourself to us. So help us to open ourselves to you, to hear your voice, to join your worship, to allow your grace to breathe upon us in power and love. So make us us now we pray in Jesus' name. As we join in the words Christ has given us. Our Father, the power is in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. question. What is church? Body of Christ. People. Body of Christ. People. People. Okay. Um, you know, when I was younger, when I was like David's age, or even younger than Joanna, I, my answer to that question was, the church is God's house. Did you ever hear that? Yes. The church is God's house. And in the church that I was in when I was like eight or nine, it was a lovely building. It was beautifully painted and it had nice wood in the front of it. And it had thick carpet. And it had chairs in the front where the choir sat and they were nicely upholstered. And I thought, if this is God's house, it's a very nice house he has. Yeah. And as a child, I sat there looking at this place and thinking, yeah, this is a nice house. And then I, but then I looked at when it was full of people and I thought, oh, it's not so nice now. Because it's all the colours don't match. And it's a bit messy. Whereas when it was empty, it was just beautiful and the nice wood and the carpet and the, the lights. But I used to think that that's what church was. The church is God's house. But I was wrong. I was wrong. You guys already know I was wrong, some of you have said it. Because the church is not God's house. The church is not God's 
dwelling place. So what is the church? It's you. And it's me. The church is you. And the church is me. Because if we've invited Jesus into our hearts as Lord and Saviour, then that's where Jesus lives. That's God's dwelling place. Your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, as the Bible says. So here we are. Abbey Street Methodist Church, not in Abbey Street. Doesn't matter. We have had to move out of our building and we've had to borrow this building, but our church has not changed. It's critically important that we remember that. We're meeting in a different building, but our church has not changed. The church building is not God's home. The church building is where the church meets. Church building is where we come together as temples of the Holy Spirit. The church is not a building. Our church building is not God's home. This church building is not God's home. We, the people of God, are where God dwells. So, so church, we're in a different building, but nothing has changed. Shortly you folks will go to Sunday school. You'll be in a different room. Nothing has changed. Church remains as the dwelling where we, as the building, sorry, where we are. And God dwells in our hearts. So what's the church? It's you and me. The people of God. Hmm? People, of, people God. of God. You and me. The people of God. And so we're meeting in a different room. Doesn't change anything. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful privilege of when we think about that, that you dwell within us when we welcome you into our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, for that wonderful truth. Help us never to lose sight of that. Help us to continue to walk with you when we're together and when we're apart. <clears throat> to remember that we are church all the time, in any place. Amen. Okay. So just a few um, uh, announcements before we share in our offering. Uh, we, we go, uh, we, we, we're going to be here now at 11 o'clock. Sunday. The, the service will also be back to being on YouTube so that you, by Tuesday or so should you can look back or if you miss the week, you know, if you're, if you're working or whatever, we'll be getting back into that uh, pattern. So next next uh, Sunday I hope to be here again to preach and, and uh, church council, please remember we have an extra meeting this coming Thursday. Uh, I will send you a document tonight summarising the meeting you had last Thursday and we can continue with that discussion. Please try church council members to be there on Thursday night if you can as well. And then I want to just give a little bit of advance notice that this Sunday, two weeks, the service will be slightly shorter than normal and we'll be having a congregational meeting. So just a conversation and just a few. So, I, so the email on uh, Friday will give you much more detail about that. But obviously this is a time of change and transition for our, for our church family. And so we just want to, so in two weeks time, something 15, the service will be slightly shorter than the rest of the time we spend just as a congregational meeting so that we can just be updated and think again as we continue in this time of transition in the life of our church. Okay, so keep that in mind as well, please. Okay, I don't think there's anything else we need to announce.
So, Father, all that you've given us, we offer to you these are gifts. Use them for your glory, we pray. Amen. Okay, folks, you can go for some of this group. So, the way you go is this way, then. So, come around the back. And up, there's no one to trip it over wire, so go right around the back. Stand. So we go straight up that way.
So I should pray for people that we don't know. We also pray for those who we do know. And so I invite you, if anyone's particularly on your mind just now, just call out a name so that we can pray for them. So Lord, you know each one, whose name we've called out, or whose face has flashed across our minds. So Lord, we lift them to you. We pray that you would make each one a point of our with hope, with health, with healing, with comfort, with strength.
And so 
let us hold on swervingly to the hope we profess. See, hope doesn't mean anything unless you hold on to it. And let's hold on swervingly to the hope we profess. And then the third one, verse 24, the third let us, let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And so the writer of Hebrews urges us here to spur one another on, to call each other forward, to, to, to keep each other uh, accountable, to call each other on to new heights of Christian living, to provoke, to arise, to stimulate each other so we don't all go still together. Yeah, I don't know if you've been watching any of the Rugby World Cup. But you often see, you know, at certain points, you see the players go into each other, go, oh, let's go. Let's go, let's go. They go around and slap each other's back. Let's go, let's go. That's what this means. That's what this means. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. You know, never was a truer uh, word spoken that, <clears throat> that if we don't move forward in the Christian life, then we move backwards. There's no marking time. There's no standing still. And so we're urged to, to call each other forward, to spur each other on. Not to criticize each other, but to call each other on in pilgrimage. And look what it says there carefully. Let us consider how we may spur one another on. In other words, think about it. Think about our sister or our brother and say, is there a word I can say to them that will strengthen them? Is there something I can do that will support them and call them on? And then the final two letters in our passage are our concern with our fellowship together as Christians. I was reminded of this week of a beautiful definition of fellowship. Fellowship is two people becoming closer to being one. It's growing together. Fellowship is laughing when one is laughing, crying when one is reduced to tears. Fellowship is crucial. Christians need fellowship, we need each other. And so these last two analyses, they're both in verse 25. The first part, let us not give up meaning together as somewhere in the heart of the Let us prioritize being together. I'm preaching to you who are here and I'm conscious of that. But let us prioritize being together because we need it. We need each other. Let us not give up being together as somewhere in the hand. Rather, let us gather in person regularly to be for fellowship and worship. And then the second part of the thing, then of the first 25. Let us encourage one another. What a beautiful thing encouragement is. To receive encouragement is a beautiful thing. To even to watch somebody give someone else encouragement is a beautiful thing. How wonderful it is just to, at a certain moment to receive a word of encouragement and assurance from a fellow Christian. Let us be doing that to each other. So, five let us. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart. Let us hold on swervingly to the hope we profess. Let us consider how we may spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let us not give up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Let us encourage one another and all the more as we see the day approaching. Today we are not in our own building. And at this moment we don't know when we will be and all will be. But nothing has changed in the truth of these exhortations. They still apply. So friends, let us 
Let us. Let us. We're going to suggest that we, we read together those five let us's. So, uh, from verse 22. So, we're going to read together from here. Okay? And we just read it together as an affirmation of what we're committing to each other. So, verse 22. Let us draw near to God with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having our hearts in the rush of the pure heart. Let us all unswervingly to the hope we profess, for he who promised us to be. Let us consider how we may spur one another towards love and holy days. Let us not give up being together. Summer and harvest do, but let us encourage one another and all the more as you see in the old fashion. Go from here with those five battles in your head. Put them up to your enemy. Let us draw near to God. Let us go on swervingly to that home. Let us consider how we may spur one another on to those who are going to do good things. Let us not give up meeting together and let us. So we have to
So let's bless each other. The grace of our Lord.